paper money, which is on its way out, and electronic money, which is already here. She thinks she's cracked the dome, doesn't she? Under Gaddafi's rule, oh, Libya man. attained the highest standard of living in Africa. It was the only debt-free country in Africa. He Imagine raised that. the literacy rate from 20% to 83%. He built one of the finest free healthcare systems in the world. Therefore, raising the life expectancy from 45 This dude was a little eccentric, but Gaddafi gave women he actually was a good guy. to education and employment and enabled women to serve in armed forces. Gaddafi provided to its citizens what is denied to many Americans or Europeans. One of the worst things our government ever did, taking this guy out. Free education. It started the flood. Check out the WHO and UNESCO data. Of my Nelson goodness. Mandela called Myanmar Gaddafi one of the 20th century's greatest freedom fighters. The foreign powers conspired to murder Gaddafi. He was targeted by the CIA, France, and the UK since the 1970s. He was an enemy of the Dajjal system, an influential enemy, and had to be taken out. So, I mean, that is the land of... Yes, we came, we saw, he <laughs> <we> died. <laughs> did it have anything to Criminal. do with it? Criminal. Uh, oh, I'm sure it did. <laughs> The US tried to oust him by convincing Egypt to invade Libya in 1977. In 1984, the CIA supported as well as trained a special commando rebel unit which tried to dispose him. Then the USA went even further and bombed his home in Tripoli in 1986 in retaliation for the bombing of a nightclub by the Libyan secret agents. In 1996, the MI6 tried to assassinate him when a hired hitman attempted to throw a grenade at him during a political speech. <laughs> 2011 uprising was initiated and supported by Saudi Arabia, United Arab Emirates, and Qatar. May Allah trap those leaders of those countries with the storm of Ard. Curse be upon them for betraying the Ummah. But why did those countries betray Gaddafi? Gaddafi feverishly supported the Palestinian cause. Gaddafi hated all monarchs of the Gulf, accusing them of being puppets and slaves to the West. Gaddafi supported anti-Zionist, pan-Africanist and black civil rights movements. Gaddafi's main threat to the international bankster cartel was his plan for a common African currency, the gold-backed... We couldn't let that happen now, could we? ...which would have replaced the all-fiat-issued US dollar, as well as the euro. Insanity, people. According to some, it's about protecting civilians. And our resolve is clear. The people of Libya must be protected. <laughs> they were safe. Now look at them. With Libya is about the oil. Yet think we'd be in Iraq if the major export there was broccoli. But some are convinced intervention in Libya is all about currency, specifically Gaddafi's plan is. to introduce the gold dinar, a single African currency made from gold, a true sharing of the wealth. <laughs> it's one of these things that you have to plan almost in secret. Because as soon as you yep. say you're going to change over from the dollar to the something else, you're going to be targeted. There were two conferences on this. It's not one in uh, 96 and another one in the year 2000 <sighs> called the World Mataba Conference organized by Gaddafi. And uh, everybody was interested. And I think most countries in Africa were keen. Gaddafi didn't give up. In the months leading up to the military intervention, he called on African and Muslim nations to join together to create this new currency that would rival the dollar and euro. They would sell oil and other resources around the world only for gold dinars. It's an idea that would shift the economic balance of the world. Countries' wealth would depend on how much gold they have, not how many dollars they trade. And Libya has 
44 tons of gold. Oh, the UK man, has double that, too. but 10 times the population. If Gaddafi uh, had an intent to try to uh, reprice his oil or whatever else the, uh, the country was uh, selling on the global markets and accept something else as a currency or maybe launch a gold dinar currency, any move such as that would certainly not be welcomed by the power elite today who are responsible for controlling the world's central banks. So yes, that would certainly be something that would cause his immediate dismissal and the need for other reasons to, uh, to be brought forth for removing him from power. It's happened before. In yep. 2000, Saddam Hussein announced Iraqi oil would be traded in euros, not dollars. Sanctions and an invasion followed. Some say because the Americans were desperate to prevent OPEC from transferring Things oil to up, people. all its member countries to the euro. A gold dinar would have had serious consequences for the world financial system, but may also have empowered the people of Africa, something black activists say the U.S. wants to avoid at all costs. Gaddafi wrote the Green Book. His political philosophy advocates more political authority to the people and masses, free health care, housing and education, equal rights to women and blacks, freeing them from being slaves to the corporate elites. This dude was a freedom fighter, man. You were lied to. So, people, instead of being slaves to huge multi multinationals, they could form their own worker cooperatives and own their own houses and cars without massive debt. Most of the money in our economy is created by banks in the form of bank deposits. The numbers that appear in your account. Banks create new money out of thin air whenever they make loans. 97% of the money in the economy today is created by banks, whilst just 3% is created by the government. Banks can create money through the accounting they use when they make loans. The numbers that you see when you check your account. It's time for us to rise, my brothers they just and sisters. Account entries in the bank's computer. That's all. Every new loan that a bank makes creates new money. While this is often hard to believe at first, but it's common knowledge to the people that manage the bank. Sorry, I didn't do a live stream today. I'm the money dead. The circulation today has no intrinsic value. Oh. For a just system, look at the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. It's dinar and dirhams, gold and silver, something with intrinsic value. The time is close when paper money will be wiped off. And in our small communities, we'll have small micro markets. And in our micro markets, we will not allow the use of the haram paper money and electronic money. In our micro markets, we're going to use dinar and dirham. And when dinar and dirham are in short supply, when the police come and seize all our dinar and dirham, then we will turn to wheat and barley and dates and salt and rice and sugar. <laughs> and what? They can't ban that, can they? So this is my solution. And right here in this hall, I have students. Right here in this hall now, I have students who are working actively to do precisely that. Right here in Malaysia. How can they control us if we used, if we did that? They couldn't. Dude, he's a freedom fighter, man. Right? I'm sorry they did it to you. It's not
this guy can kept all these idiots under control. I mean, look at everything that's gone gone down since they killed him. The millions of people that have died. We've let our government do some really messed up stuff. And I don't think our government, in a sense, is the most horrible thing in the world. But the people, it seems, that we've allowed to come to run it are some of the biggest war criminals ever made. I love you all. It is time to rise up. The storm is here.